It's time for breaking bread with Papa. Hey! Don't you know? Hey! It's our go. Hey! It's time for breaking bread with Papa. Hey! Don't you know? Hey! It's also a show. Welcome, everybody, to another edition of Breaking Bread with Tom Papa. I'm Tom Papa. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited about this one. We get to sit down with the great, probably one of the funniest working actors today, Tony Hale. Yes, that Tony Hale, you know, from Veep, you know, from Arrested Development. He's so great. I love him so much. And he was so nice to come and spend some time at the table. I gave him some bread. He gave me a rope basket. We'll explain. It's really so much fun. You're going to really love this interview. He's so damn funny. He always turns the questions back to me because he doesn't want to uh, talk about himself that much, but I break him down. <laughs> I love Tony Hill. So we've got a great show for you today. Also like to thank the good people from Lathwaite's. Lathwaite's, if you like wine, we all know that you want to be cool, right? You want to be cool. You, at the very least, you, don't, you want to feel, you want people to feel like you know what you're talking about. And when you break open a bottle of wine, you don't want to disappoint people when they're coming to visit. Well, now you can be that person because Lathwaite's goes out and discovers all the wine and then delivers them to you. They do all the research and you get all the credit. Just text PAPA, P-A-P-A, to 64,000. That's 64000, 64,000. And you get six amazing bottles of wine, plus two bonus bottles and two stemless wine glasses for only $49.99 plus tax with free delivery. Text PAPA, P-A-P-A, to 64,000. Terms apply. All right, we're not going to go into a long intro today. We're just going to jump right in because I love Tony Hale and I want you to love Tony Hale even more. And you don't get to hear him this like this in these long interviews very often. So here's a little treat for you. And make sure that you're eating a lot of candy and pumpkin bread because that's the time of year and you really should be doing it. And also, you should be baking a lot of bread on your own. Tony Hale. Um, I interviewed um, Lucy Arnez. Oh, yeah. And she just released a podcast of Lu that Lucille Ball did. <laughs> yeah. Did well, you hear about this? I think I heard about it. It's, it's her interviewing other celebrities, right? It's amazing. Yeah. Like her just hanging out with Dean Martin. What's it called? Um, Lucy's podcast. Podcast. That's right. <laughs> Lucy's podcasting other celebrities. Yeah. yeah. Lucy talking to famous people. That's right. That's right. Um, she was very nice though. I met her on the... Um, uh, I met her on the set of this being the Ricardo's movie I did. Oh, and she was very nice. She was. Mm -hmm. What did you play? I play a character named Jess um, Oppenheimer, who was the creator and showrunner of I Love Lucy. Oh, so so were you cutthroat? Did you yell at people? No, I was nervous, mm -hmm. which is a common theme for characters in my career. I've never seen that. <laughs> really? <laughs> it's in every single one. A lot of hypertension. <laughs> are you at a point now where people are like, just get us a Tony Hale type? <laughs> Have wish. you seen that on, on sheets? I used to see that when I did commercials a lot in New York. Like They would say like uh, a, a Tony Hale type, and I just remember thinking, why don't you just call me? Yeah. Like, I'm available. <laughs> right. <laughs> I could use the work. <laughs> right, exactly. What? Why isn't my agent seeing yeah, this? What's going on? You did. Were you in? You you came from New York. I right? came from New York. Yeah. So how many years were you there? I was there for a long time, like mm, fifteen years. And you, because I was there from <clears throat> ninety five to two thousand three. Yeah, that was about my thing too. And I started splitting time around there, so I even stayed in New York longer. Mm -hmm. But I was out here also, like we were going back and forth with the kids. Did and you stuff. do commercials? Very few, just a handful. Yeah, I, I remember all those casting directors, and I was terrified of them all. Commercial auditions are always so embarrassing. Mm. <laughs> embarrassing, and it's just like you just walk into a room and you just see all these guys who look and act exactly like you. Yeah, I was, I was the quirky type who wasn't all there. Right. That's how I was kind of defined. <laughs> right. Did you ever run where you? Uh, we're booking a lot. Yeah, I mean, I would say towards the last 
two years of being there, I, I was able to, because I had so many jobs when I was there. I never did stand up, so I, or or improv for that matter, but I, right. I had a lot of odd jobs. And so when I started to get more commercials, I was able to lessen the, I cater waited a lot. That was like, my, oh yeah. That was, and I actually really enjoyed cater waiting, <laughs> waiting because I hated waiting tables because mm-hmm. people were so mean when it came to food. Like, it's just so, so mean. And yeah. just so upset if they didn't get something right. And I, just, I would leave the restaurant just hating the world. Yeah. And with cater waitering, you just set up the party and you didn't really have to talk to the people. Right. And then you got to eat this great food at the end of the night. And then you just, <laughs> you got 20 bucks an hour and it was like, great. That is great. I'm actually doing a, a bit about that in my act now about how we should be nicer to each other in general. And you have to stop... Um, being shitty to waiters. Yeah. It's like, do you have to understand like the chain of events that has to happen before you get your food? Yeah. And then that last person in that process, they're not the one you yell at. Yeah. And you also don't want to be shitty to them. Like that's not doing you any favors because I've heard stories of like what they'll do to your food. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. When that, when those doors close in that kitchen, you don't know what they're doing. Those are the last (laughs) people you want to be mean to. (laughs) Right. Yeah. I always say be be extra nice to the bus boy. Oh yeah. (laughs) That guy's a rat. Rascal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But I remember, I remember like we would, when I was waiting tables, I would, if somebody didn't eat like a, a steak or something or just had like a couple bites, I'd cut off <laughs> that section where their bite was and I'd eat the rest. And I, or I'd take it home or I'd take home all the fries they didn't eat. If they just like had a bite of the cake, I'd just cut that part off and then just package the other one, other half. And had, uh, had a dude, great meal at home. These are, these are pre-pandemic <laughs> jobs. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. We were. I was talking about that the other day when I was in New York in the beginning. I was so poor. Mm-hmm. Like I would do, I, I would do the comic strip on the Upper East Side for five dollars a spot, oh. and I lived off that money for a while. <laughs> like, yeah, I would get that five bucks, and that's how I was going to eat the next yeah, day. Yeah, and that's before taxes, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Because how many like how many gigs were you doing a night? Would you say how many places would you go? And when it like was really jamming, and I can do all the clubs. Like once I got past like the early days, um, I would do like six, gosh, seven, and just run around. And you just knew all of the the owners and all that stuff. Yeah, so you'd put in all your avails, and then you'd map it out, and you'd be like, okay, so I'm going to do all of these on that night, and you time it out with everybody and then so you gave them do you mind me asking this yeah no. you gave them i've never known this so you, you you called you would call an owner and you would say i'm available this night right and then they would then give you a spot then so that you could schedule your night they would give you for the week so you would oh. each club has their avails line and you call oh. up and say i'm available monday wednesday thursday and friday oh wow um all night and then and each one it was kind of like staggered so you would get all your spots for stand up new york on the upper west side yeah and then they the comic strip would call and say here are your spots and you'd make sure that you can you can match them all and uh and you just string them together so when you accidentally which i'm sure happened double booked yourself or yeah. two, would you have to call one of them and say hey can i switch to this yeah. spot and they yeah. were always cool about that yeah it depended it, yeah, yeah 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 there were like stand up new york would be cool about it comic strip would be less cool about it the comedy seller would say uh, would make you feel like if you moved your spot, you'd never work there again. Or work again, probably. Yeah, or work again. Yeah. yeah, yeah they yeah. were so uh, scary. Was there just a lot of passive aggression too? Like, yeah, sure, man. If that's really what you, how you're feeling, if that's what you want to do. Okay. If that's, if that's okay. Oh, I'll make God. a note. I'll make oh. a note. <laughs> oh, Lord. No. Like nobody wanted to cancel on Esty. Esty was. And he was where? She was uh, the comedy seller. She books the comedy seller t- to this day. And it's so funny because as everything settled down and I, you know, rose up, I would just go to the comedy cellar and Mm. her and Manny who owned it, the original owner, Mm. they were like my family. I was there every single night and they were just like lovable. We'd go out to eat after and stuff and to, but, and then to see new people show up and be like terrified of SD, (laughs) like, and she's still doing it, you know? Okay. If you want to cancel, you can, I'll I'll make a note. (laughs) Oh no. Cause it was so hard to get 
into the club. Oh yeah. And did the, do, when you go back, do you kind of uh, reunite with a lot of these owners oh, and yeah. stuff like that? Yeah. That's nice. That's oh, like God, a really yeah. nice little community. Oh, it really is. So when you're acting, <clears throat> if you're not doing it, I'd like to keep talking about you. If, if you're, you're not, <laughs> I know. Uh, if you're not, if you're, uh, if you're acting, but you're not in improv and you're not doing stand up, were you just a lone wolf or did you have like your stable of friends that were all doing it at the same time? Mm, yeah. Yeah. I, I did sketch comedy. I, I was, I was in this group called King baby and we would do, we would write sketches and perform those, but it was not improv based. Um, and I really enjoyed that. I right. really enjoyed that. Where um, were you doing that? We did it at the Lambs Theater on 43rd. Mm -hmm. And then we'd go down to, um, oh, shoot, it was, I remember it was across from like an Aveda. Uh -huh. <laughs> like near, like, Tribeca. It was in Tribeca, but it was, uh -huh. anyways, it was like one of, it was like a club down there and there was a museum on top uh -huh. or a gallery. And we would just kind of randomly, whatever spots, we, we wouldn't hit like, we were not a part of the, you know, UCBs or anything right. like that. It was very kind of off the radar. Yeah. Um, but it was really fun. And I mainly did uh, like off, off, you know, Broadway, but not professional off Broadway. Like right. stuff, I'd see stuff, I'd get backstage magazine. Yeah. And I'd, <laughs> and I'd always just go through there and I'd circle uh, yeah. possibilities and then I'd, Audition and just did uh, like plays and really loved it. and then commercials, you know, was kind of where I so I and when I tempt I would also temp mm -hmm. and I would go to this temp agency called Mademoiselle Temps and I would I could never go for more than a day because I didn't know if we, with commercials you didn't know if you were going to get an audition the next day so right. I'd I'd go for the day <laughs> and I'd sit in the lobby. And they would always be play these Jim Carrey movies, and it was like a big purple room. And then they send you because they really just like if somebody got sick, they just sent you out to like they need a warm body at sitting at this desk. And right. And so they'd send me to like these fancy banks and Vogue one time. I tempt at. <laughs> I just like me and my khakis, just like what's going on? <laughs> and just all these uh, UCB, all these places. Yeah. And I was so excited because they had great cafeterias. These places had great cafeterias. <laughs> and back then you could make as many long distance phone calls oh, as you wanted. Because, nice. I mean, now it's not a big deal, but back then that then cost, it was huge. It cost a lot of money. Yeah. So I would just do long distance phone calls all day at the desk <laughs> and no one would know about it. And it's then I'd so leave good. and they never asked me to do anything because they never trusted me. Right. I was just a, a warm body that day. So I just made long distance phone calls and ate their food. <laughs> That's amazing. Do you remember like going to find phone booths? Mm -hmm. Like there was a there was in a, the subway in Remember the subway yeah. yeah like you get your pager and you like, yeah. <laughs> and then yes. and it was like I might have an audition yes and there was a great on a on Twenty Third Street the toy building the toy something building on Twenty Third yeah it was right by um right at the Flatiron yeah right at the Flatiron but a little west yeah and they had an old time bank of of oh, phone booths, okay, yeah. old wooden phone booths. I think that was near Dallas Barbecue. Was there a Dallas yes, Barbecue yes, right there? Yes, yes, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you could go in there and it was like something out of like Superman movie. Yeah, like yeah. You'd go in, <laughs> yeah. make your calls and get your auditions. I remember my number. <laughs> you do? 212-604-4963. Wow. And I would, I would dial it and I don't know if the yours was like this. If it clicked immediately, there was a voicemail. Uh -huh. So if it went immediately to voicemail, you were like, <gasps> and just this flood of joy went through your body because it was only for the agent. Right. So you were just like, <gasps> and then you dial in your code and then you'd hear them like, hey, you know, I had Linda, Linda McIntosh was my agent. She was like, hey, Donnie, you know, hey, I, give me a call when you get a chance. I got some, I got some news for you. And I was like, <gasps> Linda, Linda, well, you didn't get it, Tony. You didn't get it. I'm so sorry, Tony. You didn't get it. <laughs> It's like, oh. And she'd always describe me as like um, uh, uh, a not so good looking David Schwimmer. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> and I was like, Linda. And she was like, eh, you know, you're not, you're not there yet, but like, you're cute. <laughs> That's so great. <laughs> they were so honest with you back then. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, especially New Yorkers. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, doing stand up. I remember auditioning at the comic strip, and they're like, yeah, well, uh, we already have a likable white guy, so I don't know why you're going to work and it was like well how do i change that <laughs> also like i don't there's like a balance because you always especially the acting schools there's mm -hmm. like yeah you got to break them down to build them up right 
but just like it was too much. I mean, I don't yeah. know if it was because the city was so hard, but I remember going, I won't say his name, but I went to this one acting teacher that was really <laughs> popular and uh-huh. it was just so everybody was walking on eggshells around him. I was just so terrified of him. Oh and my God. We were studying Meisner and you know, you kind of have to have a safe space to do yeah. Meisner. And, and he was just like, everybody was just like terrified they were going to do the wrong thing. Mm. And it was just like the worst thing that could possibly promote any freedom. And then I went to this school called the Barrow Group. Do you remember the Barrow Group? No. It was a really great school. And that was just like, I think it was actually the first time somebody was like, hey, this is like playtime. Like you're supposed right. to. Right, enjoy it. Because he gave you a stand-up or, or sketch comedy. It was like the idea of play was right. not even in the framework. You you go right. to these acting classes and people would be like, Tony, that was really great work. <laughs> Your work was amazing. Man, we'll get get out there do the work and you're just you like know, people oh my be God, sobbing where's, yeah it's like where's and then this whole idea of play was like oh i guess i should incorporate yeah that, you know yeah my love of life yeah like why i'm here like i don't know so it wasn't even did you go to hb studios did you do the, no i didn't those? do hb i did I, barrow I did those. and this other crazy one. hb was like that it was like just like an angry yeah. former actor from the 70s and just like Oh, tell us about you and your father. <laughs> it's like, oh, jeez. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, I do get it. Mm-hmm. I get what, I get they're trying to get to vulnerability. Mm-hmm. But it's like, it got to the point where you're in a class and if somebody cried, they were like, <gasps> yeah. Meryl Streep. You know, it was just like, <laughs> right. they cried. And, and the thing is like, well, and so everybody was just trying to like emote and cry. And, get, and it was almost <laughs> like we were true. all just wanting people to say, Good work, great job, good yeah. work. You know, and it's like I cried. Do you want me to cry again? Yeah. You know, it's so weird. I know it is so weird, but there is something to. There is. I mean, well, l- let me ask you. you. You're a great actor. Thank you. You're you're so believable. Like you're one of those people that you do not see the acting. Oh, that's nice. You just nice. see this. Oh, he is this person. Like you totally, mm. which is such a difficult thing. You especially when you're in it, mm. you see when people are acting, mm. but you're just nice. the character, which is so. How do you get there? Do you have? Do you take things from your training, or are you playing? Um. Well, I remember doing this. I did this movie years ago where it was called the, it was called the Year of Getting to Know Us, and I was playing this character that was described as like really manipulative and a kind of a douchebag and kind of a player, and mm-hmm. and um, I just remember thinking, oh, I hate people like this. I hate people like this. I don't want to play this. I hate people like this. And I went to this great coach here in L.A. called Diana Castle, mm-hmm. and she said, um, she says, Tony, you have to acknowledge that this stuff is in you. Like these, these things are in you. Mm. And the fact is she's right. I have been manipulative in my day. I have been, I'm not proud. I've been a bit of a douchebag. I've had moments of, you know, entitlement that I'm not proud of. And it's like mm-hmm. the more you begin, the more I began to see these things in myself. Yeah. The more I felt like I wasn't necessarily playing an idea of a character I was playing, it was coming out of me. Oh. And so like, I think for many years I was kind of like, if somebody said, um, play this, you know, I don't know, CEO of this company. I had this like yeah. idea of like what he would be like rather than, okay, so the CEO has got leadership skills. He's, he's, you know, he's a, he, he's a motivator. Mm-hmm. He, you know, he's obviously a great people person. And I think like I can bring that into myself. And the fact is if I go into the audition and if I do, and if I bring that out of myself, I might not get that role. Mm-hmm. But I tell you, no one else has done that because it came out of me. Right. Whereas if, whereas if I was playing an idea of something, there's thousands of guys who could play that idea better than me. Right. Of course. Yeah. So I think that was a real kind of like, huh? Yeah. So like you think about my like these characters like Gary on Veep or something. You know, I'm I struggle with anxiety. I'm mm-hmm. um, I've, I have codependency in my life. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> there's you know you can kind of draw on these things. Yeah. And even if like you are playing someone <laughs> really evil, you can find, you know, like in this Benedict Society show I do, you know, he's very sarcastic. Mm-hmm. He's, he's he's kind of manipulative, and it's like like the other character, like I yeah. have been manipulative, and I like sarcasm. You know, it's mm-hmm. like you can find that in you. Right. Not to say it all. And what works. do you when you are finding that? What is the process of finding that? Um, the, 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 this guy that worked under Diana Castle, Joey Borgonia, I worked with on, on Benedict. And um, a lot of it is going through the story and just kind of um, 
like the, for instance, these two brothers on Benedict's, I played mm-hmm. twins on Benedict society yeah. and, um, just kind of thinking about their life, you know, mm-hmm. they, they came from an orphanage, um, uh, Curtin, who's the kind of the evil brother, which I kind of see it as like, he wasn't really evil. He was just kind of really broken, but uh-huh. he, his brother Benedict was adopted and he wasn't. Uh-huh. And so, I mean, that really like caused a tremendous amount of resentment. And right. typically with resentment, what happens is a tremendous amount of, you know, anger and, mm-hmm. and, and, and fault finding and victim, vic- making yourself the victim and, mm-hmm. You know, so just to kind of thinking through their life and really, because I've honestly, I've, I deal with a lot of resentment. I have, I have resentments sure. to, to, to people in my life and it really does not breed the best outcomes. Right. It doesn't do any good. No. You know? <laughs> yeah. And so I can see that if let loose, mm-hmm. that's not a pretty picture. Right. So they just to kind so of. you just kind of spend the time. Yeah. Just kind of daydreaming. And I'm sure, and I know, I'm sure you do this too. It's like when, when going through the script, thankfully I worked with uh, Phil Hay and Matt Manfredi, who were the, uh, the showrunners and, and wrote the scripts mm. in addition to other writers. They were very, very open to, yeah, it doesn't sound like something Benedict would say, or this doesn't curtain. Right. I feel like, what do you think about this option? Or, and I've, I've learned that rather than saying, this is not this this is not right you i have to be creative and i have to challenge myself and think of options Uh uh-huh because rather than going with them and saying no it's like this feels a little uncomfortable what do you think about this or what do you think about this right 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 because i'm i'm obviously feeling something off so i need to challenge myself to think of ideas right right so that really helped they were very open to that which i really appreciated that must have been so difficult though because what you're as i'm trying to catalog your daydreaming and coming up with the character and like that's a it's a lot of work and you've got to really believe it and have it really be part of you when you're going to do it. and then you're doing this with two characters yeah. in the on the yeah. same it's that's a lot it was a lot but it's like I, i'm so i'm so grateful i mean like you it's just like we're so, i'm so grateful to have gigs you right know? just like man i'm so grateful and it came at a time where i was we shot it in vancouver mm-hmm. and um and I, because of the pandemic, uh, I couldn't come back for, I couldn't back home for five and a half months. Right. I remember you told me that. So like I was, I was just in this and I couldn't really hang out with anybody. Right. And so I was just in my apartment God. and just really, it's all I could think about. So I'd yeah. come home and I'd go through the script and I'd, I'd, and the, and Phil and Matt were in LA and we'd, uh, zoom and have like wine together and, <laughs> right. and just talk. And I was able to just really kind of dive in. Wow. So that's I'm great. It's like a nice. Nice little like yeah. acting summer camp in a it way. It kind of was. I really kind of was. Veep was kind of the same way because I remember Veep, we shot in Baltimore and all those first three years and everybody was, uh, their families were all back home. So we kind of became each other's families and yeah. we do the gig and then, or we do that we'd shoot and then we'd go out for a drink and just talk about the day. And it was oh, like, that's oh. great. It was, it was nice to kind of get that foundation. You know? Yeah. So, so oh nice. man, that makes so much sense though. Cause I'm sure you've been in things where people aren't really hanging and you kind of clock yeah. in and do it. And it's like, yeah, well, of course that doesn't all gel. <laughs> yeah. And I, I mean, I've always like your guys community of with stand up. It's I'm sure when you do gigs that it's, you all go out and just hang out, which is to me a huge part of the joy of it. Huge. Of just, of just being able to be like, can you believe that guy? And right. this person did this and she said that. And yeah. just to kind of congregate and, you know, go it, back and forth. And you almost have to, it's uh, like, uh, you, we, you tell each other the same stories over and over and over again yeah. about like how you're doing your work and who these people are and like yeah. how we're going. And you, you have to be told, it's like you have to refresh all the time. You yeah. have to constantly, it's like the Stones, like rehearsing satisfaction. If you've heard that, oh, no. like they still, when they were, I mean, I don't know what's happening right at this moment, but still like in their most current tours, they would still rehearse satisfaction. Really? Yes. And why is that? Because you, we have to remind ourselves. Oh, meaning we're never, might, yeah, yeah, we're yeah. never, we never retain everything. We're constantly changing, constantly evaluating. Yeah. And I feel like that's what the community kind of gives you is like, oh. when I can roll into the comedy cellar and just sit there and listen to people. It's like, we're very, no one, we, I can't share this with anyone else, but these people are yeah. the only ones that have this perspective. Yeah. Do you guys do bits to each other? No, pretty rarely. I mean, with some yeah. close ones, you might 
say, is this, you know, is this anything or, yeah. um, and some, some comics like really love to talk about it. Like what if I would talk to, uh, like Seinfeld when I started working yeah, with yeah, him yeah. on the road and stuff, yeah. he loves to, like, if you just tell him, if you tell him I've got this bit about uh, Pellegrino and I'm thinking about, you know, every time I hold the bottle, I'm more arrogant, arrogant than yeah, I, yeah. and he'll be like, he'll jump on it. <laughs> He's just like, he, that's all he wants to talk about. <laughs> yeah. And other people are just like a little repellent yeah. to it. Yeah. Yeah. But just having that, having that community is, but then you like, you go through these, these parts in your career when you have a family Yeah, and you, yeah, it's like, you're not hanging out as often as yeah, you did yeah, unless yeah, you're yeah. forced, unless you're trapped during a pandemic in Vancouver. Yeah, yeah. Do you still, is it kind of that, that you kind of just do weekends or you, how does that yeah, work? Yeah. Yeah. And then come home and then go back out, that kind of a thing. And that you're pretty much alone that you're, it's you in the opening act, you know, when you're headlining around the country, yeah. you're not like once in a while you'll be in a, in town with someone else, you know, and, go out after but mm. it's it's pretty much and it's exhausting so that's like that's exhausting you're doing two hours of talking a night and then yeah i just want to go to the hotel and yeah, just lay yeah, there yeah. <laughs> yeah and it would i would think it would be hard to detox from something like that mm. or is it not because I, I always associate it with um i mean it's obviously maybe not hyper as emotional but yeah there's the stories of i mean it was al pacino or somebody doing this really intense play in New York and it would end at 10 and they just, yeah, they went to the bar and they just couldn't detox from it. Yeah. You know, and I feel like all that energy. Yeah. Like how you kind of come off that. You I've know? heard that, but if you were to put a mattress at the side of the stage, <laughs> I could say good night, wave to everybody and crawl in and be asleep before everyone's left the room. <laughs> Are you a morning person? Uh, more so. I've, I've changed into it because of children. Yeah, I am. Yeah. I love morning. You I, do? Yeah, I would probably be like that. I'm not, after 10, I just begin to start to dwindle. Well, here's the thing. I get that way too. And the second show starts at 930 Oof. and the opening act is on for 20 minutes. So you're, st you're going up there at 10. Yeah. <laughs> and I always think that like the show is just me. This is the Ooh. entire, there's no band, there's no nothing. Ooh. And I'm really, we want to go to bed now. <laughs> do you also have moments where you're, because I, I, again, I do not do stand up and I have huge admiration for what you guys do, <laughs> but I do have moments being on talk shows where I'm, yeah. I'm sitting on the couch and like <laughs> Conan or whomever is there and, yeah. and all of a sudden my body just leaves my body and starts watching my body yeah. and just being like, shut up. Just like. <laughs> You're talking too much. Just <laughs> shut your face, Hale. Just shut. Your story is too long. Shut it. You know, and I can't. And then I'm, yeah. I'm and it's like you just watch it. And then I'm not in my body. And it's just. It is weird. Do you those have dis like yeah, that? those disconnected moments where you. I'll be on stage sometimes and I'm telling. There's jokes coming out of my mouth. Yeah. And then the other part of you is doing that is commenting or like what's after this do we know what's after this yeah. just keep going let's see if we yeah. have it oh yeah. it was that oh or is it the kind of thing where you're reading a page and then you forget what you just read yeah similar you know just because you said that story so much similar yeah i mean but that you know but those are moments you don't want to be in those moments you want to be like oh yeah connected so yeah, you have yeah, to, yeah. you're always kind of like trying to get back onto the is the, the 10 o'clock audience uh is, is there a different vibe or are those like night people? They're more night people. Okay. They're a little younger. They're oh, okay. Like, Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That yeah it's sense. different. And it depends on where it is, like in the city. And if I'm doing things at the comedy store, it's, they're kind of all the same. Yeah. But yeah. if I'm in Indiana, uh, that those people coming out at 10 are, they're the wild ones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're ready. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, a. Uh, it is fun though. I, but, so, but, but when I was saying like when you have the family and all that stuff, it's like yeah. all that extra time is spent with them, you know? Yeah. And you come and I'm sure you, like you come home and it, then you, it's, you step into to family mode. Yeah. You know? Yeah. How do you do it when you have a, a, a new, new part that you're working on or trying to get and you've got the family around do they know dad needs to w go into his daydream mode and dad, lock Daddy's away? Daddy's an angry face. <laughs> uh, uh, Are you, I always find that difficult, like to yeah. isolate from while in the home. Yeah. 
Um, sh- yes. I mean, it, it, that's a bit challenging. I'm trying to think. I haven't. I don't know. Like when it comes to when it comes to really um, fleshing it out. Yeah. Like if I was to do a real uh, angry something, or if mm-hmm. I haven't had to do really really heavy intense things, but a couple. Yeah. I kind of get, I kind of, I go through it in my head and I'm kind of thinking about it. I might get a quiet space, go, but it's when I get on set that I begin to really, uh-huh. or like in the, the dressing room or something. Right. Really begin to flush it out. Oh, you know? yeah. Because it feels, it feels like the safest space there. Cause right. Not so much my family, but I think like if I'm screaming and the neighbors are wondering, you know, it's like. Your dog's you know, looking at you. Yeah. It's all weird. <laughs> yeah. What's wrong with daddy? <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And so it's like when I get to the, when I get to the <laughs> space, that's the time that I'll like really begin to flush it out right right well you're so talented Mm -hmm. i uh it comes from so much pain (laughs) that those do you ever see the phil hartman acting coach no oh my god look it up on youtube on snl on snl oh wow yeah i'm sure you'll find it on somewhere but phil hartman playing an Mm. acting coach in new york and he just the way he's like arrogance and he's saying he's so He's so confident about what he's saying, and he's yeah. saying nothing. Yeah, and he's breaking these people down, and he just like hates one of them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's so. Oh, I really should watch that. Oh, it's so good, man! What a talent! Like what? What a talent! What a talent! And God. what a loss! I know. It's weird. I was actually not uh, not recently, but a, a while back that he came to my mind, and I. Mm. Just that, I just remember, I don't remember where I was actually, but I, I remember thinking like, what? Like, yeah. not only did he pass, but just the circumstances of it was just like wild. Insane. 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 At the time I was like, what? Yeah, how does that happen? How does that happen? And then like everything else, you got to move on, but you have these moments of like, wait a second, that did happen. Yeah, you know? I know. Such a weird one. He was such a bright light. He really was. And he didn't join SNL until later. He was like, really? Yeah, he was like, he, he didn't come in as a. He was at the time. I think he was the oldest cast member. Really? Yeah. You know, my wife was a makeup artist on SNL. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Is that how you met? No, we we met at, at church actually. Oh, really? In, in New York, yeah. But um, she, uh, yeah, she was a makeup artist for seven years on the show. Like the, yeah. like the Amy Poehler and Molly Shannon. Well, no, yeah, Molly <laughs> Shannon crowd and Tina Fey and. Thank you. You're welcome. On a on a gas star because each each uh, cast member her. gets a kind of makeup hair team because they're so fast. The changes are so fast. Right. And so Anna was uh, on or Martel was on Anna's team. Yeah, oh, that's cool. So she did the whole Martha Stewart yeah. look, <laughs> and then uh, the, the NPR look with Molly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, stuff. really? Yeah. That was, those are great. She, she loved she loved working on that. That's so cool. I mean, they just had a commercial, like a commercial break to change the entire wigs, bald caps, my God. You know, makeup, just like in a two minute, three minute period. Did you get to go to the cool SNL parties? <clears throat> I did go to one. Oh, I, I did go to nice one. Cool. I think I, <laughs> I remember I went, cause it wasn't with her though. It uh, was, oh, really? she went to those, but we, we were just dating at the time. Mm-hmm. But then when Julia hosted, uh, Julie Lee Dre- Dreyfus hosted uh, SNL. I went down and, that's, uh, and I went to one of those parties and I, it was very cool. Oh, uh, that is cool. Julie is amazing. Oh, she's amazing. Oh my God. I got to do just two episodes or four, I don't know, on uh, Christine. Christine. Yeah. And I just, I remember looking, I remember looking at the script before I came in, before we worked and I was like, oh, okay. So, you know, you're looking at the scene and it's like, okay, so I have the joke there and then she's oh she's setting me up for this joke and and then everything that she said was funny yeah. every like the most boring straight line she it was all funny everything she I did know. was funny I'm like I know, man. What, the writers must be so blessed that they oh. I mean there were great writers on there but I mean that you have like she's going to take everything yeah and she also, I was, since my character on that was so close to her all the time. So good. I just, I got to even hear like the little like grunts she would do <laughs> and like, just like the smallest things. And yeah, I was labeled, which I don't think is true. I think she actually broke more than I did, but I was labeled the one that broke the most. <laughs> oh, and, really? uh, one time I broke so much. She turned to me and she says, Tony, you know, you're not watching the show. You're in the show. <laughs> So I got a nice big box of wine from our friends at Lathwaite's. 
Lathwaite's is a great subscription service that gives you a whole array of wines curated from all around the world. For 50 years, Lathwaite's has been de delivering wine the right way from people who love making it. They find all these people, these unique people, bottle um, uh, bottlers and vineyards and winemakers. And they go literally taste over 40,000 wines a year and only 600 make the cut. So you get to enjoy the cream of the crop. The wines I got from them are amazing. Bee's Knees is a zinging, thrilling South African wine. Journey's End is a small family run estate. You, you just have to, I love wine. I love finding out about wine. The people at Lathwaite's give you a description of every bottle that comes into your home. So you get a, a knowledge of it, it connects it to it. The greatest thing about, for me, enjoying really great wine is the story behind it. It connects you to a place, it connects you to the people, and then you pass that on with the people you're sharing it with. 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you don't love a wine for any reason, Lathwaite's, you'll just let them know and they will refund it. Members save on every subscription case that they choose and each box includes tasting notes, food pairing tips, and serving inspiration. Now you can get six amazing bottles of wine plus two bonus bottles and two stemless wine glasses for $49.99 plus tax with free delivery. All you have to do is text PAPA, P-A-P-A, -A, to 64000. Get this special offer. It's PAPA, P-A-P-A, -P -A, to 64000. Terms apply, available at lathwaites.com. Let me spell Lathwaites for you, kids. L-A-I-T-H-W-A-I-T-E-S, Lathwaites. Dot com. Enjoy the wine. And now back to the show. <laughs> like, yeah, that's a funny show. There was a weird thing is when she uh -huh. years ago, she did. Uh, she was the blind lawyer on Arrested Development. She played that character in Arrested Development. And, right. And we both individually got the question, did we do a scene together on Arrested Development? Uh -huh. And both of us separately said, no, we were never in a scene together. <laughs> uh, no, we were, so we just weren't. This beeps the first time we worked together. Yeah. And then somebody sent us a screenshot of a scene that we were both in <laughs> at a desk <laughs> talking to each other for an extended amount of time. And we just both blank, bl completely blocked it out. <laughs> it's hilarious. Just made no impact on each other's lives. <laughs> oh, the rhythm you had was so great. Oh, man. oh was, my that was, God. That was a real gift because, God. I mean, you know, when you, when you work with somebody that you feel like that, <laughs> that, that rhythm is, is, is safe and established and you feel like when you throw the ball, they're going to throw it back. Yeah. And, man, it was just like, I feel like it was just, we were doing like a dance. Like yeah. there was one scene where she was getting ready for some party and, and uh, I was zip, I was zipping up her dress, and I was putting her bracelet on, and I was putting her shoes on, and I was putting her necklace on, all during this like bit. Yeah. And we just there was just we found that rhythm, and it was just like riding this kind of comic wave together. Right. You know. And yeah. I, I could have done that. Yeah. A hundred times, which actually really, when I said that about um, uh, satisfaction, them rehearsing that song, it's yeah. like. Since I'm not a musician, I'm like, that seems odd. But like, I would do that scene. Right. I mean, if I was given the chance, I would do that every right. opportunity I could because I just love that scene <laughs> so much. Yeah. You know? Oh, man. The move of of you doing, you, you, I'll just, in my crude way, sum it up. You actively trying to help her with, and do something and be a little meddlesome and her like tolerating it, tolerating it, and then her cutting you down and the way you would cower and leave the scene or just like you're it was like you getting caught oh what a oh yeah funny funny just absolute shame <laughs> yeah right <laughs> because also i she she the thought of her when people would say god gary like she's so verbally abusive to you it was just like no like she's jesus right like, <laughs> she's everything, talking to everything, me everything everything that comes out of her mouth is glorious and i mean <laughs> why isn't she president i just i just like i was like just completely blinded uh, to any of her yeah. dysfunction <laughs> everything she said was right that's got to be so much fun like it when you talk so about fun. discovering the character like yeah. once it's locked in like yes, that yeah that's got to be a joy it was a joy and at the same time as a process like you know it's it's really scary like that when we were doing they brought us out to london which was really exciting to rehearse mm -hmm. for uh, the season and or the pilot or something and 
I was so nervous because again I don't have an improv background I mean I've, I've gotten better and working with people like Matt Walsh who like created yeah. UCB like I've really learned a lot but I yeah. didn't have the background and we would kind of go through the the pilot and they would just kind of stand around us with all these you know English writers and just with their little notebooks and just write and I thought oh my god they want us to come up with bits mm -hmm. like I didn't know what's going on and so that first week, I w when I was just trying to find the character, I would just go up to the hotel room and just call my wife and be like, I'm going to get fired tomorrow. Oh my God. Like, I'm going gonna, gonna to get fired tomorrow. I was convinced I was really? going to get fired. And then come to find out, everybody felt that way, except Julia. I think she was pretty locked in. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody thought they were going to be fired because the process was so unique. Yeah. And then come to find out, they weren't really looking for us to come up with the bits. They just were kind of seeing what gelled, mm -hmm. if it really came from an organic place. Right. And so that kind of relaxed us a little bit, but wow, it'd oh be nice if gosh. they told you that in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> no, that would that would have been a nice little informant. I think actually, and honestly, he probably did. Mm -hmm. I was probably just in this like we got to come up with funny like with this because yeah. in in the states like many like I remember doing this movie uh, years ago where I kind of felt like they were waiting for us all to come up with funny bits. Sure, like, the framework wasn't really solid, and so. They kind of said, well, you know, he was on this and he was on this and she was on this. So let's just put them together and see what happens. Right. And the director was like, all right, go. <laughs> oh, it was just this like, I felt like all of a sudden nobody's captaining the ship mm -hmm. and you're looking for me to bring the funny. I don't have any framework. What the hell? It was so nerve wracking. And so I yeah. think I associated those wow. two things. Right, right, right. But he, that was not at all Armando from Veep, but man, that was the other one was a really scary experience. Ma'am. I want to thank you for the, um, for the rope bowl that you made me. Oh. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, I love I love doing that. It's so good. Why, why did you, you have, don't have you to like it so much? It's so great. No, because look. Which, by the way, did you tell the story that I accidentally put I put TPP on there instead of no. your, yeah? I put your your initials are TD TGP TGP, and we were doing our <laughs> talk over Zoom, right? And I heard TPP. And I put the monogram as TPP on the bowl, and it's TGP, so sorry. I'd, I had no problem with it. My wife, right. I, um, so Tony makes these rope bowls, which are great. As a bread baker, this is my hobby. I, I, I bake bread, and uh, I baked you bread. That's very and nice. Baskets are always, bowls, that kind of thing, are yeah. always in my kitchen. So to have that one is great. And oh, that's that it, good. And that the initials are off, slightly off <laughs> makes me like it even more. There's, um, <laughs> there's paint on that, so careful with the bread. Oh, there is. Because <laughs> uh, like, <laughs> I paint, I, you know, like that gold, there's some gold in there, I think. Uh-huh. And I, that rope is painted gold. It's acrylic oh. paint. So maybe I should tell people that before I give it to you them. Probably. <laughs> How did you get into making these bowls? Well, when I was doing uh, Benedict, this sweet girl named Shauna, or sweet woman named Shauna, she, as a wrap gift, she gave me a rope bowl. <laughs> and I was just like... <laughs> How do you do this? How do you do this? Because <laughs> I've always wanted to paint. Mm -hmm. And I've, I really, the idea of sewing seems really cool to me. And so I just went on a YouTube dive and I would, I would FaceTime with Shauna and she would like show me what machine she got. And, and I, so I, I string the robe up on my back porch and then I paint, you know, whatever color I want to do. And then you, you just begin to sew the rope together and then you mold it like you maybe kind of would pottery into a bowl. Oh. And then you take leather and then I got an embosser, those kind of things that you <laughs> emboss the leather. <laughs> And uh, and then I sew the leather on the rope. Yeah. And I just like it's the best thing. It's so I did great. go through a huge with like anything you might have done it with bread where it's like yeah who wants bread who wants a bowl <laughs> like, this is the most exciting thing ever and now it's kind of dwindled off like I, it has yeah I need to, I need to get back to it yeah yeah no I know exactly what you are I mean, look at the podcast <laughs> I haven't stopped baking bread for years I can't stop what kind of sourdough yeah you can take a look at it if you'd like I don't want I didn't know it's a little flatter than I would like but Ooh, um, I think you'll like it so pretty yeah it came out this morning dude it, that's really kind thank you yeah well I'm, I'm gonna bring you even a better one it's I overproofed it so it's a you little know, I'm, flat I'm glad I'm glad <laughs> you know what it is I appreciate it's it. like getting the initials wrong <laughs> I didn't want to say it um I you know what here's the thing and you nothing nothing is more satisfying than hot bread and butter the best it's the best <laughs> it is the best 
Like when you, yeah. when there is a hot bread platter in front of you <laughs> and there's, and you put some like kosher salt on top of that butter and uh, that butter is kind of soft. Yeah. It is, there is literally nothing better. It is so good. I literally on my way here was daydreaming. There's a place this that has like a gourmet food thing off yeah, of Sherman yeah, yeah. Way and they sell this French butter in these wheels mm. and I was like, I don't know if I have one in the freezer. Or I should just stop and eat just in case. <laughs> It's so great. It's and then so like great. for the sweet, you just take the same bread and put some Nutella on it. Oh, Nutella. I've never put Nutella on this. It's so good. <laughs> it is so good. It's just, there's something, I mean, there's a, I love that you call this uh, uh, breaking bread because um, it's just, it's super communal and everybody loves it. It is. I really do love it. I love the process of doing it. I love sharing it with people. Oh. It got a little weird during the pandemic when everyone was shut in their homes and I would be knocking on neighbors doors like do you want some bread I made in my kitchen well, what a gift <laughs> like what a gift to, I mean I to me that's such a love you know offering almost, yeah you know? and it really there's something about it when you're doing it with the person in mind like mm. this is like a two, so like flat, this is like a two day <laughs> yeah well sometimes you know you let your friends down a little right. like a not so good looking David Schwimmer <laughs> No, but like last night I had a, a show at Largo mm. and I, and it went long mm. and I, I had fed the sourdough starter earlier in the day <clears throat> mm -hmm. and then put the dough like together monster, like, it, it yeah, like and then put it together like early in the evening. Yeah. And then I went off to Largo and I figured I'll go and I'll be back and I'll finish Tony's bread. That's and really sweet. And someone didn't show up and I ended up having to go on last. And so I was there for a couple of hours and I got home at like 11 and now it was kind of overproofed and I bet, but I've got to get this done so I can bake it in the morning when I first wake up. So it'll be ready for, for when we meet. So it's like the whole time you're on my oh, mind it's great, and it's it? a great thing. Like you're thinking about oh, yeah. your, your pal the whole time. I love that. Yeah. It was so good. Do you, look, this, the starter, this is, I, is, mm -hmm. I, is, I don't really understand any of this. So is it, did somebody give you the starter or did you make your own starter? Uh, both ways. A friend gave me a, a writer on, I wrote on the show called Red Oaks on Amazon. And mm -hmm. when one of the writers on there gave me some of his starter. Hmm. And then my daughter, when I told her the story about this process of like, you used to take flour and water mm -hmm. and yeast from the air goes in and starts to eat it. And then you keep feeding it more and now you've captured a culture. Mm. And then you keep that and you feed it for, people have them for like hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that starter, uh, so I had the one that was sent from my friend and then the one that my daughter started and the one that my daughter started is actually the very active really strong one hmm. that's that one yeah and so is it something you just take a piece of it and put it yeah so uh -huh. if you're gonna make if you're gonna if i when i was baking this bread i yeah. took a tablespoon of it put it in a bowl uh -huh. and fed it some it's just sitting in a mason jar in uh -huh. the in the, in the refrigerator uh -huh. and then when it's time to bake uh -huh. i take it put it in there add some flour and water to it and it starts to eat the it's, Gosh, it's, it's being fed so it, it is yeah. wild and then you do that two or three times and now it gets really active it's really hungry it's really eating it and it's getting really bubbly and it becomes this bubbly thing and that's your yeast so the only other thing in the bread is flour water and salt huh. and then that yeast so it's kind of there's like a chemistry it's kind of an exciting experiment each time yeah it kind of is it is and then you manipulate it with the different flowers and the amount of time yeah and you start to manipulate the flavors and stuff so when you one more question about this when you are making since you're you know so much about it mm. what constitutes a bad sourdough when you taste it uh when you taste sometimes it could be too sour Sometimes, huh. you know, it could be, it could be, uh, I don't really, you know, like a San Francisco sourdough that got, became mm -hmm. famous for that. It, um, it was very sour, but I like it a little more earthy. Huh. Like this is a country blend. So this has a little bit of rye, a little bit of mm. whole wheat and all purpose. Mm. So it'll have a little bit of a nuttier, mm -hmm. earthier taste to it. And I take it back about the Nutella. I think butter <laughs> and jam, really good jam mm -hmm. with bread is like. That's a good one. It's a really good one. Yeah. 
uh, uh, you know, the classic avocado toast. What, here's a weird one that I really love is I like to take it and put um, cream cheese mm-hmm. and sardines hmm. and capers. Ooh. Ooh. I went from. <laughs> it's very complicated. I do love capers. I love capers. I love capers too. What did you eat when you were a child? Who was the cook in your house? <clears throat> um, my mom cooked for us. Was she and, a good cook? Uh huh. I think so. I don't really. Re- I don't. I don't know about you, but I have a very hard time remembering. <laughs> um, my but my sister, my brother, and I were talking about this recently, and there was a lot of casseroles with chicken mushroom soup. Uh huh. Where'd you grow up? Uh, my dad was in the army, oh, so, so we we moved around a lot. Um, right. But a lot of like eating at the mess hall, like the the base cafeteria. Right. And um, <laughs> but back then it was you know whatever you whatever was made you eat like there was no right. there was no debating I don't want that and I know you know I don't really like this and it's like if you don't like it you just don't eat like if there's liver in front of you you got to eat the liver you just had to eat it no and, one said what do you want tonight <laughs> no it's like a short order cook <laughs> no and I mean I my daughter is amazing but this it's it is very like you know, what do we have? You know, yeah. Um, what, a little piece of this, a little piece of that. Like, what do you think about this? And it's like, my God, it became, became a cheesecake factory overnight. <laughs> and then you ask them sometimes, uh, what do you want to eat tonight? And they're like, well, I want this Vietnamese food. And it's like, well, I don't know how to make that. Yeah. So I guess we're ordering in. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Sure. Let's go into your account. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny. My mother would, would always point that out when she would come stay with us. She'd oh, like, yeah. We never asked you kids what you wanted. <laughs> no. And actually, because of that standard, yeah. that foundation, the kids never even thought about asking for something else. No. Think, like, it never crossed my mind that I would be like, can we have something else? I'd be like, can I be hit? No, she right. wouldn't hit me. <laughs> yeah. You didn't have input in any part of your life. No. <laughs> Not at all. What you wear, like no. there was what you wore, what you ate. There was just you just did as you were told. Yeah. But there was there was definitely a set family meal. Yeah, that's good. But it was just like whatever was there. That's that's what you ate. Right. Yeah. Did you guys were you really? I was really into malls when I was a kid. Oh I yeah. Really, really loved going to the mall, and that was like a big like the food court. Oh, and the food court. All that kind of stuff. What was your favorite stop in the food court? Um, thank you for asking. Um, <laughs> I would say, which they do not have on the West Coast, the Great American Cookie Company. Oh, I remember that. And they had these double doozy uh, <laughs> sandwiches with two cookies and icing in the middle. And it's just like, it's such a joy. Double it's such doozy. a joy. And it's just so sugary, but it's so great. Yeah. And I just actually did recently did this essay for a friend of mine talking about chain restaurants. Oh, yeah. How they get a real bad rap. Uh-huh. <laughs> but I just love them. <laughs> I love them because cause like when somebody says, you know, oh, I, all I see is chains. I'm like, yes. <laughs> I mean, it's like, you know, quantity over quality. <laughs> Happy days. Happy days. <laughs> you know, those cheddar biscuits and red lobster. And there's this, there's this great um, Pazuki. Have you ever had the Pazuki no. at BJ's where it's like a hot, it's a chocolate chip cookie and a skillet with ice cream on top? Oh, it's just God. Like, here's the thing. It's a simple goodness. You know, it's yeah. not some, you know, which is still great, but like yeah. a little pastry with like a dollop of like flavored foam. You know, it's like, it's like <laughs> you're getting like a cook, like a hot cookie. We're in America. We're in America. <laughs> I love the uh, Nathan's Nathan's oh, yeah. hot dogs in yeah, the mall. Yeah, yeah. That was good. Those fries, they would come mm. with a little stabby stick. Yeah. Oh, those are good. And also, you know what you're getting. Oh, yeah. Like consistency. You, consistency. And I don't know if you did this happened to you when you were on tour, but I would, <laughs> when I was in Baltimore, I would sometimes just like walk through uh, Trader Joe's or Whole Foods just for the familiar of it. Ah. Like, it, like there was a Whole Foods next to me and then there was... Right. Like if there was like a Chili's or something like I would just go there just because I... I've been traveling so much and I knew what to expect. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's like being home. Yeah. That's really... That's pretty smart. Yeah. I'm always like seeking out these new, like unusual places, but it's disorienting. It's disorienting. But there's something about like a Trader Joe's or just kind of like walking through and be like, all right, this smell I remember. Right. Like it just feels like familiar. Yeah. Yeah. I like the Chick-fil-A. That was a good spot. Like early days oh, Chick-fil-A. Oh, so good. It wasn't really... It was waffle fries, man. <laughs> yeah. So, so good. So good. <laughs> 
And their sweet tea that they said didn't have sugar in it or their lemonade, but uh-huh. it was the sweetest thing you've ever tasted. You're like, <laughs> right. this has aspartame or it's something. It's kind of funny to think of you like as an, as an army brat leading in those cafeterias and that it makes sense like when you're in New York and all of a sudden you're in like the grandest cafeterias in the world when you're interning at these places. <laughs> oh, yeah. There, I remember we did, a, we did a party, we catered a party, the opening of the Philharmonic, and it was this just grand party. Wow. And we set it up, and the on the desserts in <laughs> chocolate, they had written a score of the music that they were doing that night Whoa. on each of the like 500 plates. Oh my god! The whole, like one of the lines of the scoring, <laughs> and we would pass it, and these just people would just like dive in, and, <laughs> and I was like, oh my god! Like this is like these people work so hard on this dessert, you know, and they're just like, ah, I pass the this. <laughs> He's just like, come on, man. But then at the end of the night, we would do the same thing. We would just like dive right. in and just attack it. But it was yeah. so beautiful. It's amazing. Those the, the Whenever I play Vegas, I'm always astonished. Oh, my gosh. At the back, like in the back of the house, seeing oh. the amount of food. So much food. God. Really good food. Vegas has great food. Insane. What's the best Cirque du Soleil you, you think out in Vegas? I've never seen one. Really? Yeah. If you see one, I recommend O. Yeah. The water one. Yeah. It is really good. Really? Yeah. All right. Uh, we also saw uh, Love, the Beatles one, which uh-huh. is good. And then there was one more, but I really liked O a lot. Yeah. All right. I I'm, think I'm going to play there again in like January or February. Okay. And also the Wheel of Fortune slot machine. I like The best. <laughs> the best i love it i don't need a blackjack table i don't want to go figure out craps no i just want wheel of it's happening fortune it's so, it's so joyful it's also very meditative it is and you i give myself a cap i say i'm gonna you know spend you know, forty dollars right and if i lose it then i'm going to bed but wherever i'm in that 40 i just keep putting it back in and it's just i don't even i don't even care about this just the button and watching <laughs> right. and then do it again and watching it's so nice i don't know why it's and so then when nice. people say oh do it up to two dollars i'm like no you're taking away my <laughs> yeah, my, my fun turns time. my fun time i'll do five cents for like two hours <laughs> yeah. so what is the food situation at home now now do, do you cook at all we just started doing um hello fresh oh yeah yeah yeah. and we really like it we we don't do all five days we do like three of them and it's it's nice like it's it's something we do together like each of us will prepare one of them because we only have three people in our family right that's good each person prepares it and it's just a nice time that we and try something new right it's really good oh that's good that's nice well i hope you enjoy the bread thank you very much man let me know if you enjoy it because i'm going to bring you some more you don't actually don't have to. I know, but I'm going to. Is this a fa- What is this? That's my uh, my little logo. It's a face. <sighs> Did you notice um, my my logo on your basket? No, I don't remember. Um, well, that's really pretty. It's is upside that- down. Oh. <laughs> 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 I thought it looked like a fish. <laughs> no, it's a I face. I was thinking like the fish and loaves. You know, I'm starting to think that maybe no one oh, sees it. Oh, it's a face. It. Yeah. Oh, I do see the face. Yeah. Oh, nice. It's like winking. Yeah. Is it winking? He's a little sleepy. <laughs> no. <laughs> I saw that as like, I thought that was a fish with two loaves, like the Bible story. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for doing this. This is really great. I mean, this is why I do the podcast. To sit with I people that I and get to spend some time with them is really so nice. So fun. Thanks for asking me, man. Do you want a piece of cheese? Um, it's uh, smoked yeah. Gouda. Smoked Gouda? Yeah. I just had a white, a goat cheese Gouda from Trader Joe's that was pretty good. Oh, really? You really love the Trader Joe's? That's what I love, Trader Joe's. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Do you get any of the prepared sandwiches at Trader Joe's? Like the wraps no. or any of that? No. No. That's beyond my. That's beyond me. <laughs> I like. I like they have these little dark chocolate mints with honey in them, mm. and they have those great sausages like um, uh, chicken, chicken apple sausage, and all this kind of stuff. Ooh, nice! This is a salami with a truffle. Oh, really? Where'd you, where'd you, where'd you, yeah. Where'd you get that? There's an Italian market in uh, Burbank. Don't care. It's not Whole Foods. Not Trader Joe's. <laughs> oh, it's an Italian market in Burbank. <laughs> There's no Hawaiian tiki signs around mm. it. <laughs> not familiar. Don't care. <laughs> it's pretty good, though, right? Really good. Yeah. I can totally taste the truffle. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's uh, an Italian market in Burbank. Who else is going to be on this podcast with you? Um, We've had a lot of great people. Uh, no one else today. 
Do you sometimes do two in a day? Uh, yeah. Is that kind of exhausting? Um, sometimes it's you know it was actually not like I really look forward to them. Like mm -hmm. I look forward to like spending time with people, and it's I really you know, and I do that radio show with Fortune, mm -hmm. and that's two hours in the morning, and mm -hmm. then buzz over here when I have people that I can do it with. Um, do you know what? Like I'm always I, talking. <laughs> I, I, would, I I love that you got to that space because as a guest, you kind of come in like almost in a performance, a little bit of a performance mindset. Sure. Where it's like, you know, you want to give, you want to give a good uh, episode for you. And it's just this kind of like what story you can tell. But being on the other side, I think you can kind of get to a relaxed place where you really do want to just hang out. Yeah. And that's, I bet, a really nice space to be in. Yeah. It's a, it's, you know, you, I'm conscious of that too. It's like, I, you want it to be fun and you want it sure. to keep moving. And, and, but it's so interesting because like if I, we run into each other at a party or whatever, we'll just, you know, have fun and right. talk about whatever. But even people I've known for years, you never sit and say, so how did you feel when you're yeah. trying to develop a character? Like that's, yeah, like, yeah, you never yeah. get to do that. Right. So in this space you do. Right. So it's, uh, without it being like really super performative, it's like, it's still interesting. You yeah. Know? And I love, I love going deep. Yeah. I, so I, so I would think if I did, I would have to really watch because mm -hmm. there's a part of me that wants to like get to trauma. And it's like, where is this coming from? And, uh -huh. and cause you know, we're, we're comic actors. And it's right. Like, and it's like, man, where is, but, but then you have to watch boundaries. Like, I don't want to ask something that somebody doesn't want to talk about. And, yeah. And I always, <laughs> I don't know if you have this moment, where with interviewers, I have it a lot with fans at shows, like someone will ask me a question and I'll start going, talking about it. And then I'll go like a little further than they expect, you know, mm -hmm. like I'll be like, yeah, but I was just feeling like a little, I don't know. I was just kind of disconnected and I was just kind of dreaming. And they kind of look at you like, okay, that was fun. And they walk away. <laughs> it's like, no, no we don't, we don't come to you for that. Right. We come to you for the funny stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you start talking about something deeper. I don't know. But in this space, in this space, I feel like you can, mm -hmm. you can go a little deeper if you, if it leads that way. Yeah. And yeah, which is, I think needed. So Tony, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. You're the best. Oh, I appreciate it. <laughs> when I bring bread, do you think you'll give me a different poll? One that is not painted on, yes. Thank you. I apologize about that. It's all right. I'm now second guessing my comment that I made. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, everybody. How great was Tony? I told you he was going to be great. Go back. You know what? Just go to the beginning and listen to it again. I know. It was that enjoyable. Thank you so much, Tony Hale. You're the best. Thank all of you for listening, and thanks our good friends at Lake Weights. We'll see you next time.